Hello fellow vapors and welcome to the Devil Vapor Vape Reviews. It is time to review the Geek Vape Aegis Hero. So the Geek Vape Aegis Hero, available in six different colors. I've got the beautiful blue version here today. It's got a 1200 milliamp hour internal battery, a four or a two mil capacity, top adjustable airflow and 45 watts of power. Yes, so I've got the 0.4 ohm coil in here today at 32 watts. Airflow is fully open. Let's take it for a quick two. Yes, and I will save my opinions on flavor, clouds, and all that jazz for the end of the review. So what we're going to do in the review today is take this down to the table, have an unboxing, show you what you get inside the kit, get it all set up for you, go through the different calls and all that jazz, then bring it up top, take it for a two, and give my overall thoughts and opinions on it, and we'll be comparing the two different calls that you get inside this package. So without further ado, I'm going to grab the box, which is over here, and I'll see you down at the table with the Aegis Hero by Geek Vape. So this is the box for the Aegis Hero. Let's take a look at what you get inside. So first off, you'll get your Aegis Hero in your chosen color. Below that, you will get a few cards, a user manual, and an accessory box which contains your micro USB charge cable, a drip tip and coil removal tool, a bag of silica gel, a 0.6 ohm canthal mesh coil, and a 0.4 ohm canthal mesh coil. So a few tech specs on this, it measures in at 48.5 by 25.4 by 82.9 millimeters, has a battery capacity of 1200 milliamp hour. You can charge it via USB type C, a wattage range between five and 45 watts, and has a four or two mil e-liquid capacity depending on where you are in the world. So with all that out the way, let's take a look around the device. So you've got your 510 drip tip up the top and the O-rings are located on the drip tip side. Below that, you have got your top airflow control. Nice bit of knurling around here, nice and matte black. I do like the matte black look on here. You can control this to fully closed, fully open and anywhere in between. At the top there, you've also got your filling port for your e-liquid behind a rubber gasket. Nice big filling hole down there for your e-liquid to go into. To remove these pods, you just simply pull them up. The magnets are pretty damn strong. So I've got to pull that off of screen. Yeah, there we go. It does clip in very, very well. Uh, the magnet is there, and this is where you put your coil down there. So we're gonna start off with the 0.4 ohm coil. So I'll pick the correct one up, 0.4 ohm coil. They're both mesh, uh, more or less the same, just obviously completely different resistances there. So what you wanna do first is juice these up, give it a bit of a prime so it gives it a nice little head start to its life of vaping. A few little drops down there, does it fine. Now, as you can see, the coils will only go in one way. See those lines either side? You wanna drop your coil in so the two flat spots are either side. Push it in like that, see? And it is all nice and flush. If you do put them in incorrectly, you will get leakage, you will get crappy performance. Um, so yeah, just show you, if you do put them in the wrong way, they won't sit in properly, they'll sit like that and you'll be a bit of a silly billy with a wet device. So put them in the right way first time, or not at all, you have got a bit of leeway on there, which is good, um, but just make sure that they are in there. See me pulling that out has just moved it about too much, there we go, we've got it in correctly now. Um, so yeah, fill this up, and we will let that soak in. Not that this is a bit flappy, uh, in all honesty. I, I'm not a big fan of rubber gaskets, because you've got to pull them to one side and flop them out of the way and stuff like that. So let's just squeeze that down there, four mil, let's go. Now that is all filled up, put that to one side, push it back in, wipe off any excess juice, and you are more or less good to go. You just wanna leave this to rest for around about five to 10 minutes before vaping on it, just to make sure that that core is nicely saturated. So right, once you've let this sit for around about five to 10 minutes, put the pod back in the top of the mod. The magnet does take it in there, but you've also got to click it down ever so slightly. So that clicks in there quite nicely like so. 
absolutely fine. Um, it will recognize the call if you have got it on there. So let's have a look around the device. Fire button, screen, plus, minus. On this side, you've got Aegis and an S or a 5. Not quite sure. Nice rubberized coating. The metallic C-frame, which is uh, pretty obvious, uh, makes it look like an Aegis. Lever with the blue stitching to match the blue C-frame. Aegis and your charge port down there. So if you open that up, you've got your USB Type-C charge port. When you're done with that, just flop it back over, push it in, and that fits in quite nicely. A nice big old front on this as well. It is, you know, it's pretty much the same as the rest of the other Aegis lines, just shrunk down and put into a little, little shell. So let's turn this on, five clicks of the fire button, it's already on. Five clicks off, you get power off. Five clicks on, and then you get Geek Vape and then you get your screen. So let's take a look at that in a little more detail. Okay, you'll have to bear with me on this because the screen is pretty damn bloody bright, but you've got your resistance up there, battery level, your puffs, which were cleared previously to making this review, your wattage, your power mode here, and uh, your wattage symbol down there. So if you wanna change your wattage, simple, up and down to the fire button, it goes up in 0.5 watt increments. You can hold it down and go faster all, all the way up there we go, all up to 45, and then round robin back to five. Now if you click the fire button three times, you can change it from power to bypass mode. Press and hold the fire button on there, and then you will see that in the B mode there with the voltage, so this will be controlled with, it's kind of like a mech mode, it will use the voltage of the battery and the resistance of the atomizer to um, do the perfect wattage through the uh, through the gubbins there, or the voltage through the gubbins there. So one, two, three, back into power mode, press and hold, absolutely fine. And then when you are vaping, you'll get vaping come up down the bottom there. Now, as you can see, the puff counter is going up. It won't uh, do it if you do little toots, um, but as you can see, it's going up. But the fire button and minus, that will clear your puffs. And then you have zero puffs on there. It just goes back into zero. Once you, one sec, like that, and then like that, and that should clear it. There we go, back to zero. Press and hold the fire button, and then you are good to go. So that pretty much runs through everything, so let's take it back upstairs and take it for a two. So the Aegis Hero, we are back up top with it. I hope you enjoyed that down low section. So we've obviously got that 0 0.4 ohm coil in here at the moment at 32 watts airflow fully open. Let's take it for a two. The flavor is good and pretty damn surprising as well. Um, the airflow is nice, especially when it's fully open as well. That's where I've been mostly having it. So again, a nice flavorsome vape. I would say around about a 6.5, 7 out of 10. Really, really nice flavor. Nice saturated vapor. Um, yeah, really damn nice. Let's crank that airflow down to half open, half closed and take it for a two, keeping it at the same wattage. A little bit of a warmer vape more saturated flavor clouds dissipate a little bit quicker but the flavor is pretty damn good yeah the flavor is pretty damn good that is a solid seven with the airflow half open half closed so right that was the 0.4 ohm call we're going to go on to the other one which is the 0.6 ohm so i'll be back with you in a sec Right, so we are back with the 0.6 ohm coil in here we've got it at 24 watts airflow fully open let's take it for a two Nice plumage. I would say the draw is a little more restricted on this one, but still nice flavor. Nice flavor and nice clouds. Let's crank the airflow down a little bit to half open, half closed. A nice amount of restriction there. Now what I wanna do with this as well is test if you can actually mouth to lung it. If you crank the airflow more or less fully closed, not really. You can't really mouth to lung this or the other pod. Cool, I mean, sorry. Yeah. Quite nice, quite nice flavor. I would say yet again, a 6.5, seven out of 10, nice flavor. Now it is time to go through my pros and cons of the Aegis Hero. Get rid of that out of my mouth before. So um, let's go through the, the cons to begin with. We'll get the bad bits out of the way and be done with it. The only main con that I have with this is the toughness of the pods and pulling them out. I, it's like there's a little tab here that clicks into the bit of metal. 
and I just find it a little bit too tough. It could be a little bit looser. Yeah, you could shave a little bit off the little nub on here. Don't know if I can get that on there, but there's a little nub there. You can probably shave a bit of that off, but I really don't want to do that. You know, this is how it is. Um, but it does mean that it stays in there quite securely. I just think it stays in there a little too securely for my liking. Apart from that, um, I have been questioning myself about the bypass mode on here. Yes, it's got bypass mode. Now, the only reason I can see that being on here is if you are using a rebuildable core on here, like an RBA coil deck thing on here, um, unless they're planning on releasing something for the future for the top of this, possibly like an RDTA jobby or something like that. I don't know. I'm open to suggestions. What do you think? Why do you think the bypass mode is on here? Let me know down below in the comments. Apart from that, you know, the screen is very, very small, but it's easy to read. Um, I don't really think the puff counter needs to be on there. I'd have rather have that removed and have the wattage in bigger font on there, bigger text. Um, it's good having the resistance. The battery, the battery level could be a little bit bigger, but apart from that, really damn nice. Going to pros, it is nice and tiny. Really, really nice and tiny. It fits in the palm of your hand. It's nice and discreet for some stealth vaping action, wherever you may choose to stealth vape. It's got good flavor. It's got good clouds. It's consistent flavor and consistent clouds as well. The cores last a reasonable amount of time. I've been testing the cores on this for around about five or six days each, and they are still going absolutely strong. The airflow control is nice and smooth. It locks at either end. It stays where you want it to stay, and that is good. I've had no issues with leakage from the coils um, like underneath or the filling port up the top the buttons are nicely placed and all that and overall you know it keeps in form with the original Aegis line um, and people I want to go into this as well people may be getting bored of the Aegis line and um, I'll tell you something don't get bored of it you know it's the, for me the Aegis symbolizes you know the IP65 the IP67 rugged devices it just shows that they're bringing out more of these uh, rugged devices yeah geek vape you know, they're bringing out a mech mod. Um, are they bringing out a mech? They're not bringing out a mech mod. That was someone else that's bringing out a mech mod. Forget about that. Um, you know, the, yes, I think Geek Vape should kind of have another line as well. They should keep the Aegis line, keep it going, but then go on to more like metallic box mods and stuff like that and tube mods and stuff. Not not necessarily mechs, um, but, you know, go on to more, you know, fully metal things rather than the Aegis line. And, you know, keep the rugged line, but have kind of like a more higher end or or less rugged line like a normal box mod line and I think that'll be pretty damn good um, but yeah battery life absolutely blooming lovely this lasts me easy a day but obviously it will depend on how much you do or don't vape um, and what what is your vaping at and what call you've got in there as well call cool life I've already gone into it Overall, a cracking little kit. I really, really do like it. Now, if you go into price, um, I've had a... No, I don't want to be blooming notified about new products and promotions later. Um, I've seen this priced around about 33, 34, 35 quid over here in the UK. Now, prices may vary depending on what website you go on. So, go on the website that you shop on most and you know that it's trusted and all that jazz um i'm not sure if i can go onto the geek vape store which i'm going on now i am 21 plus let's see if they've got it on their website so i will browse through um i presume it'll be under starter kits it is not for sale on their line yet, but the Aegis Boost Pod Mod comes out at $40. Um, so yeah, you probably, this is a smaller mod, so you're probably gonna look anywhere between 30 and 40 quid or 30 and $40 for this bit of kit. That's what I am gonna say personally. But I cannot find um, anything like that. You can buy like the pods for $11.99 for the four mil. Uh, but apart from that, I really can't find Oh, there we go. Geek Vape Aegis Hero Pod Mod Kit. Yes, I can find it. $37.99 over on the Geek Vape store, um, which isn't too bad a price. That does equate to around about 30, 35 quid. Um, so not too bad price whatsoever. So overall, what do I think to the Aegis Pro 
the Aegis Hero, it's not the Aegis Pro, the Aegis Hero. Overall, I think it is a cracking little kit. Um, you know, buy it if you want it. Don't buy it if you don't want it. But, you know, I think it has its place in the vaping industry, um, in, in the vaping world, and with hobbyists and starters and stuff like that. I think it really does have its place, and it goes very, very nicely with the rest of the Aegis line. And, you know, it's got a pretty damn good price to boot as well. So I'd like to thank the lovely people at Geek Vape for sending this through for the purpose of review. I've been the Devil Vapor, and you've been watching Devil Vapor's Vape Views.